Hey everybody, so this is going to be task uh, 1.6, writing explicit equations for geometric sequences. We're starting on page 43. So just like before, when we're doing arithmetic sequences, we always need three numbers to, to, before we can write the equation. We need our starting input. We need our starting output. And of course, our in this case, our pattern, in this case, it would be our common ratio because we're doing geometric sequences. So just like before, we're still going to name our functions f of x or g of n or whatever. And we're going to just have that there. That's just the name of the function and which variable we're using for our inputs. But we always start with the value that we had, our starting output, which is we, uh, so the other word for our starting value. So we are going to put that first, starting output. But this time we are multiplying by our common ratio each time. We take the first, um, first output in our table and we multiply it by our common ratio and then we multiply it again and again and again. So I'm going to write times the common ratio. It's really, really important that it's always in multiplication. So remember, Division pattern must be written as times a fraction. Okay, don't forget that. Very, very important. So the thing is, we're going to do that over and over and over again. And when we multiply over and over again, we can condense that. Instead of writing times common ratio, times common ratio, times common ratio, we're going to take it to the x power because that's how many times we're going to do it. But just like before, if we start on the first term, my starting output is on the first term instead of on the zero term or the zero input, we need to subtract the starting input. And all of that is in our uh, exponent. So there we have it. This is the format that we're going to use for our um, expressing explicit equations for geometric sequences. And look here, common mistake, when a geometric sequence has a um, division pattern, we must use a fraction to represent the pattern of the equation. That's what I was just saying. So if the pattern is, is to divide by five each time, use times one fifth as the common ratio. I got ahead of myself. All right, there we go. There we have it. So let's do this. We are going to do the same thing we did before. We're going to identify our three important numbers. So my starting input here is a zero. My starting output is a four. And then I have to find that common ratio. So what's happening between each of these? So that's a times three, that's a times three, that's a times three. Here's my common ratio. I'm going to write my equation. Start with f of x equals, as always, starting output. That's the value I started with. That's a four. And then I multiplied by three. So that's the next thing that's going to happen. That's what I did to it. And I did that again and again and again. And I will keep doing it again x number of times. And I'm going to say minus whatever my starting input is. In this case, it's a zero. So this is one of those ones you can simplify to just f of x equals four times three to the x because our starting input was zero, okay? Over here, my starting input is a one. My starting output is 600. I'm gonna start with a big number. What's that gonna tell you about our common ratio getting smaller, right? So I am going, it's a divide by two, but we won't do that, right? Instead of divide by two, I'm gonna write that as a times one half each time, times one half. So those are my three numbers that I need. I have my f of x equals, start with the output. And to get the next number, I took that 600 and I multiplied it by one half. So that's what I'm gonna do here too. And then it's, to the x power. 
But this time, because it's the input is a one, I have to say x minus one, because I don't want to multiply by one half to get the first term. I already have the first term, so that way that gets rid of that. Um, now there's one other thing I want to point out here. When you have a fraction and it's being taken to an exponent, you should put it in parentheses. Some of your calculators, if, um, depending on how the type is, it could take the whole fraction to the exponent, but the safest thing to do is put your fraction in parentheses, and as you write it, you should have it in parentheses. Otherwise, the exponent would just belong to the one and not to the two. Um, so be careful about that. All right, I think we have a couple examples in the back. At the start of sales, there were 400 students who still needed to pre-order their books. Each hour, the number of students who still needed to pre-order their books was cut in half. Okay, so we are talking about students is what we're measuring, and we're measuring them each hour. So I'm going to put hours here. And number of students here. So that each hour, that tells me the um, label for my x axis and my inputs, um, and the number of students is my outputs. All right, so at the start of sales, so I know I'm starting with 400. Is that 0, 1? The start, so no hours have passed, so that's a 0. And then I'm going to count up by hours. We'll just count by ones there. Number of students, it's cut in half. That is dividing by two, also known as multiplying by one half. So that's what I'm going to use right there. So this becomes 200, 100, and then 50. Great. Um, now we're going to write, instead of f of x this time, they want us to write p of h. That's fine. Just use P for my name of my um, function, and H is the input of hours. Okay, that's just the variable I'm using. And I'm still going to do what I did before. I look for my starting input, starting output, and I use my one half as my common ratio. So P of H equals whatever we started with, which was 400 students, and each hour we kept on multiplying it by a half. So I'm going to put that in parentheses. Because I did it over and over and over again, and I'm going to do that x, the x minus our input this time was a zero, so you can just leave it as 400 times one half to the x, and that would be fine. Over here, you're going to now use that function. I have an input of three, so I would write, oops, oops, ignore me, no, ignore me, but this is our input variable, so I need to change this. Instead of x minus 0, it should be h minus 0. I hope you guys caught that. Nice work. Um, all right, here I'm going to take my equation. If 3 is my numerical input, that's going to be 400 times 1 half to the third power, or 3 minus 0, which is just 3. And that is going to get us, if we type that into our calculator, that should get us 50, which is good because in our table, that's how cool what we got. That's a really good way to check to make sure your equation is correct. Now I'm going to do the same thing for P of 5. I'm going to say 400 times 1 half to the fifth power this time because my input is a 5. In that case, I got P of 5 equals 12.5. So after five hours, 12 and a half students needed to pre-order the books. So that's when it starts to get a little bit wonky, but that's how you would find that number. That's not on our table, but if we extended the table, that's what the number would be. Number 10, on day one, Safia sends out a chain letter to nine people. Each of these people send a letter to nine people on the the next day, and each of those send it to nine people on the third day, and so on. So we have the table already, days, and the number of letters sent. So all we're going to have to do is find a starting input, our starting output, and our pattern. And the pattern, sometimes, especially with these big numbers, it's kind of tough, but it tells us it's by nines. So I'm going to say times nine, times nine, times nine, check to make sure it's the correct number, but and it is. And I'm ready. I'm going to say mm, L of D. 
L of D days and number of letters, I guess is that what that stands for, equals what we started with, which is nine. And we just kept on multiplying by nine to the X minus our starting input, oops, which is a one. And there we have it. So we can check this real quick. Um, we know it should end up being 729 because it says so on our table right here, but it's a good way to test your, your work. Nine times nine to the three minus one, which is the same thing as nine times nine squared. And that does equal 729. All right, and then over here for L of eight, we do the same thing, nine times nine to the eight minus one, which is equal to nine times nine to the seventh power. And then you would have to find that answer, which I think I have a calculator here. Nine times nine to the seventh power equals, whoa, that's a lot of letters. Um, four, three, zero, four, six, seven, two, one. There you go. Pretty good. All right, and that is it. You guys are ready for your RSG. Great job. See you later. Bye.